Seconds out. <laughs> Round two. Oh, 
seconds out. Round three.
Ladies and gentlemen, in the belt number 275 at the ring A, the winner of points by split decision is the boxer out of the red corner from Colombia, in the Valencia de Coria. Ladies and gentlemen, we now proceed to our semi-finals to the ball number 276 in the women's live lightweight category. The race are judges from Indonesia, Czech Republic, Thailand, Cuba, and France. Referee of the battle, Emerson Aston, Guatemala. Coming to the ring first, the boxer from Turkey, fighting out of the red corner, Boston Mass, Chakro!
Ladies and gentlemen, in the bout number 276 on the ring egg, the winner of points by split decision is the boxer round of the Red Corner from Tokyo, Hosea's Chapulo!
loses a balance there as she comes forward, Perijoc. First 30 seconds. Jolliman, good use of the feet there, but then does get caught on the end of a, a left hand. She's maybe been caught slightly by surprise here. Rattling the ribcage there, Perijoc. 28 years old now, Jolliman, 29. Cuffing left hand, made contact with the top of the head there, I think, of Scholleman. Good one, two there from Perijoc again. Combination finishing with the left hand that time as well, and Jolleman trying to give it back to her. But Perijoc, as I say, right at the very start of the fight, stepped into the middle of the ring, let her hands go, and she just seemed to find that distance straight away. That can be fluke at that stage, of course. Uh, and there she she was out of range there. Weight came forward, and Jolleman picked her off. But by and large, she's landed more because she's found her range better. Jolleman just made a fall in again there. So I'm not suggesting this has been one-way traffic because it hasn't been, but Perijoc again just dips ahead and walks forward a little bit there. When she sees her coming, Jolliman is able to take, the, take that little step back, but there Perijoc just steps in and finds her. Jolliman turning well out of the corner. Final few seconds of the round. Red corner, he did the better work, I thought, in that opener, and she gets it 4 1 on the on the cards. Worked hard in that opening round. You can see towards the end there when when Jolliman when she launches an attack from too far out, Jolliman sees it. She can just take that little half step back. And then she falls in as as boxing coaches would describe it. The weight comes forward and you can't get it back. You've got no real control over it. And if Solomon can make her do that, then she can pick her off, possibly. She showed glimpses of that in the first round. Into the second, steaming in again there, Perijoc. Solomon did shift those feet. And tried to pin her with the with the left and then the right. And Jolliman made the adjustment there. Perijoc came forward. She just stepped off to the right hand side. Perijoc stumbled in a bit. And then she did just catch her with the right hand. Good left hand there from Jolliman. That was nicely done. Again, little step and found the left hook. Perijoc still marauding in as much as she ever has been. But Jolliman turns out of the corner. I think she's 
finding this easier to deal with, those time passes. Good left hand there from Perijoc on the inside. It's the final minute of round two. Sholomon needs this one. I'd say at the minute she's doing enough. Not by a big margin though. Just slightly cramped for room on the inside there, Parajoc. Just couldn't quite find the space for the right hand. And then it was the same as they were up close. Scoring in the second round, absolutely crucial. It was another tight round. I'm really not sure what we'll get. I would just go blue maybe, but there's, there's not a lot in it. I would just go blue, actually. And I'll be in the minority there with the judges because three out of the five there have gone for Perijoc and... Similar scenario to one we've seen a lot throughout the course of the day. The fact that she's got three out of the five there, Perijoc, is, is key. Because it means that she's two points up on three cards heading into the final round. There's one drawn and the Zimbabwean judge has got Jolomon two rounds up. So a big spread of scoring there. I thought the first round was was red, I thought the second round might have been blue. As it is, Jolomon has got a lot to do heading into the third and final round here. Good combination there from Perijoc. Left hand there from Perijoc, then just lost his footing as he looked to move off to the left. Good jab from Perijoc. So midway through round three, and as we know from the score, Jolomon has got to win this final round and win it really big. Walks onto a right hand there, the Kazakh fighter. Perijocci won the European title in 2019, won the golden belt this year on home turf earlier in the year.
30 seconds to go. And Jolman's brought it as best she could in this final round. Perijoc, a nice jab there. I think he's shown the better gas tank as we've headed down the stretch here. Head guards come off, Lacrimiora Perijoc of Romania. That's her in the red corner. She's going to be the one who goes through here because she had a two-point lead going into that final round with three of the judges and she's not going to have relinquished that, no chance. So good fight. Close fight, but it's Perijoc who will be confirmed now. So she gets it on a split, 4-1. Our judge from Zimbabwe, I suspect, will be the one who, well, not I suspect, I know, will be the one who scored in favour of Jolliman there because he gave her the first two rounds. And then the other three. Scoring for Perry Josh. Three of them, 30 points to 27 or three rounds to nil. The other one, 29 points. 228 or two rounds to one so through she goes to the final at bantamweight where she will face the winner of our next fight between Preda Kamon Tintabtai of Thailand and Hatice Akbas of Turkey Prita Kanon Tim Tabtai of Thailand got a bye, then a couple of unanimous decisions, then in her quarterfinals against Mongolia's Yasugen Uyun Setseg, squeezed through by split decision. Box of the World Championships in 2019, got to the round of 16. Bronze medalist in the World Juniors in 2015. And she's up against a home fighter here in Hatice Akbas of Turkey. She had a good win in her quarter-final against Stanomira Petrova of Bulgaria, who won the Stranger Tournament earlier in the year. And Akbas, gold medalist at the recent European Under-22s in Croatia.
quite sure what the delay is here. Tintab ties in the ring, kitted out, all ready to go. Akbas taking her time. So on goes the head guard eventually. She's under pressure here, Akbas. Saki Roglu got through without any particular problems a couple of fights ago. This afternoon, though, Elif Ganeri, Seema Kaliskan, they both lost in their semi finals. Isa Chagirir won. That was in the opening contest of these semi finals. So one out of three for Turkey got through this afternoon. Chakiroglu made it two out of four. Akbas will be headed to make it three out of five. So here we go. Akbas of Turkey in the blue. Boxing out of the Southpaw stance. Tintabtai, Thailand in red. Nice left hand there from Akbas. He's taking that weight onto the back foot and catching Tin Tabtai coming forward. Akbas has got the height and the reach advantage here. Again, just looks to throw that right hook and move off to the right hand side. She's happy to give a little bit of ground and see if she can catch Tintab tight as she comes forward. A couple of lefts into the body there from Tintab tight. Getting onto the inside there, Akbas. Tintabtai rather looking to let her hands go. There's that hook on the move. And a straight left hand from Akbas as well. And again, that, that right hand, she just likes to throw that and move off to her right. Good fight this though, Tintabdoi just winging in with a big left there, which didn't miss by far, creeping in with that front foot. Right hand into the chest there from Tintabdoi, just takes those feet with it and never too far apart, never too narrow, always the same distance between them, just canters in with them. Side saddle, if you like. Right hand again there from Akbas, and again as she moves off to the right. The thing about flicking punches in from that low is that they kind of explode up into a fighter's eye line. It's difficult to see them. Right hand again there from Akbas. She lands out almost every time she throws it. It's one of the reasons why some fighters will hold their hands low and flick their jab up from the waist. If you, if you throw it from a more conventional on-guard position, if you hold your hands up by your face, which is what coaches will tell you to do, it's easy to see that jab coming because it's in your eye line all the time. If it comes up from the, from the waist, then it could be a problem. Well, 
some 10-8s in there for, for Akbas, and she was landing more and more regularly towards the end of the round there. No doubt she won the round, no doubt at all. Uh, and I can see the case for the 10 8 I can see the case. She was landing regularly. Tintabtai was always coming forward. It was never in any trouble, but she was comprehensively outlanded in that first round, really due to the, the finish, the final minute that Akbas had there. Probably wouldn't have scored that 10-8 myself, but it was a good clear round win. So into the second. That's a good right hand there from Tintabtai. She's in red, boxing for Thailand. Akbash of Turkey in blue. And there's that good hand speed and good movement. Throws that combination, finishes on the right hand and then moves off to the right. That time just held the feet and went straight down the middle. Some good variety here. It's a good performance. Tab tie caught by a lovely left hand there from Akbas. Just waiting for her, giving that ground, retreating towards the ropes, knowing that she's going to make a move. And then when she did, just trusted her, her hand speed. Right hand lands there from Tintab tie. It's not like she isn't having some success. She lands another one there because she is at times. And they both just trade backhands on that right hand side of the ring. And it's a good fight to watch this, it really is. But Akbas is quite clearly winning it. That'll be another round in the bank for the fighter wearing blue, who's turned it on here. She's bang in form this season after winning that European under-22 gold, and she's risen to the occasion here, absolutely. And... 4 10 nine, one, ten, eight. So she's over the hills and far away here, Akbas. The only thing that can stop her now is if she gets injured has a couple of points deducted or Tintabtai can knock her out because that's what you'll really need to do here. A 10-8 across the board would do it, but I would say that landing that one single big shot is probably more likely than that. Neither of them are likely. So into the third, Akbas of Turkey in the blue with a comfortable lead in tab tie of Thailand in the red. With a lot to do here, but I've enjoyed watching it. She's aggressive, she's come forward, looked at, let her hands go. It's not been reckless or, or gung-ho. There's some technique involved in it there as well. And she's never taken a backward step when she's been landed on. 
And you can see how she's got this far. Again, that's good upper body movement, good reflexes, and that's the fight kind of in a microcosm almost because she gives that ground, happy to just back up towards the rope. She's tempting Tintabtai in, and Tintabtai has not got slow hands either. She really hasn't. She's no slouch on that front, but she's just waiting for her to throw something, and then either she'll get out of the way of it like she did there and then throw something back or trust her hand speed to be able to beat her to the punch. Good left hand there from Akbas. And this is as good a performance as we've seen all day, actually, I would say. Just over 30 seconds remaining, and still Tintabtai looks to come forward. There's that right hand though, slung from low, makes contact, and as she's moving with it to her right hand side, just continues to move after she's thrown it, and takes her off to a safe distance. It's a shot to nothing really, because it's basically impossible to counter it. Final few seconds, there goes the bell. Thoroughly enjoyed that. It's a very good performance from Atici Akbas of, of Turkey. She'll win this by unanimous decision, but I enjoyed that from Tintabtai too. I like what she brought. I like the way she went about it. There's some ability, some technique there. Of course, she's got a, a bronze medal at the World Championships. What else would you expect? But I've not really seen loads of her before today. And she tried to put the pressure on Akbas as best she could, but that battle was equal to it, and that was a really good performance from the Turkish fighter. So she makes it through to fight for gold. Jack Bass goes through. So Akbas through to face 
Kramiura Perijoc of Romania in the final at Bantamweight. And now we will move on to our lightweights. And this is a real interesting matchup. This Alessia Messiano of Italy up against Beatrice Ferreira of Brazil, who most people will make favourite, I'm sure, given her recent exploits in the American Championships and the Olympic Games. But Messiano won a gold medal in 2016 in the World Championships a little while ago now, but she's still national champion and she's made it all the way to the semi finals here. She's obviously feeling good. Beatrice Ferreira. As I say, got gold at the American Championships in Ecuador recently, silver in Tokyo. She's won the South American Games as well, the Pan Am Games, the World Championships in 2019. There's very, very little that she hasn't won. Just that Olympic gold is, is missing. Won by stoppage in her first fight, then... Unanimous decisions, the most recent one against Natalia Sadrina of Serbia in her quarter-final. Messiano has been pretty comprehensive herself, 4-1, 4-1, then 5-0 in her last fight against Mariela Carney of Greece. So Messiano of Italy in the red, Ferreira Brazil in the blue. This in the lightweight division. Nice short left hand there from Ferreira early on. Quickly into a stride here, that one two was decent. She seems to have found her range quite swiftly here. Messiano went to throw that right hand, didn't got a three-punch combination back as a reward. I think she had the guard up and blocked most of it. Left hand there from Messiano. Quite a big step to her left as she threw it. Nice little jab there from Ferreira, who's having the better of this opening minute. These two right on top of each other within punching range. Bro, just looking at the referee there, just, I think, expecting her to break them apart. She gave them every chance. No one was really holding, they were just leaning into each other. Messiano happy to just put her weight onto Ferreira. Good right hand there from Ferreira, and again. Good work to the body there for Ferreira too. She's very, very efficient. She doesn't waste much at all. Just a little pull back and then look for the uppercut there, Ferreira. Messiano's feeling this a bit, I think. She's been put under some 
serious pressure here by Ferreira, not because she comes storming forward, throwing blizzards of punches. It's all, as I say, it's, it's pretty economical. She doesn't really wind up with anything. They're short punches. She trusts her reflexes, trusts her defence in the pocket. But that's where she likes to be. What you need against someone like her is a real stiff ramrod jab. The ability to throw that right hand jab, double jab, right hand, step off. Good opening round for the Brazilian. And a couple of 10 8s there, actually. One from the Philippines, one from Zimbabwe. Clear round win. Clear round win. Plants that jab nicely. That's what I'm talking about, about how comfortable she is up close. She's comfortable in that, in that pocket. Trusts her reflexes, trusts her upper body movement. That's a good combination. Left up top, right into the body, thrown almost simultaneously. Very difficult to defend. Messiano just can't quite get her punches away. That's the problem she's got here. She's getting beaten to the punch by Ferreira basically all of the time. And then when they get up close, because she's that little bit taller, Ferreira gets it at the range where it's difficult for Messiano to find that space to get those longer arms loose. There's that combination, left hand, right hand, and the left hand down to the pit of the stomach there, really. She's right on top of her opponent there. It's very difficult for, for Messiano to really do much about that. Again, good short shots. Right hand got through. And this is hard work for Messiano, really is. She's not throw, showing any signs of, of wilting. She's still trying to engage trying to get her own work done. A little warning about use of the shoulder there for Ferreira. Again, the three-punch combination, the right hand, the third punch of it was the cleanest one, the heaviest one. Big left hand and the referee steps in for a standing count there. And as I was saying, this is, this is becoming more and more difficult for Messiano. A couple of 10-8s again there, another one from Philippines, one from Ireland. So 
Big, big margins on the scorecards there. A 20 to 16, a 20 to 17, two 20 to 17s, and two 20 to 18s. So Ferreira is, is out of sight here. And if she wants to, could ease up on the on the gas a bit in this third and final round, but it's not really what she does. Nice one too there again from Ferreira, stepped off to the left-hand side and caught Messiano with another right hand. Messiano's trying to bring it here, credit to her. She's always been trying to do that right from the, right from the first bell and she hasn't had all that much success but she's kept going all the same. Been a very successful couple of weeks for her, she's going to walk away with a bronze medal and 25,000 US dollars and I don't think there was probably all that much expected of her when she arrived. Good pedigree as I mentioned but most of it a little while ago. Bronze medalist in 2014 at the Worlds. Gold medalist in 2016 at 57 kilos. Thirty years old now, Messiano. Good combination there from the Italian. Midway through round three. Going down to the body there, then looking for the uppercut, which didn't land, and a big overhand right, which didn't either. Probably just as well for Messiano that neither of those got through, but credit to her for avoiding them. right hand swiftly off the back of it that left it's almost a, a reverse one two there leads off with the right not all that much much weight on that but then really cracks through with the left so Ferreira is going to go through to the final which is probably what most people would have expected before this tournament started, that she would make it to the closing stages. And she pretty much won every second of every round there. I don't want to be too unkind to, to Messiano because She never stopped trying, but Ferreira is, is relentless. So Ferreira goes through. By unanimous decision.
and she won all three rounds with all five of the judges there a number of 10 eights in there as well and those are some of the widest cards we've seen the widest cards we've seen today actually let's have a look 30 26 30 26 30 25 30 27 and 30 26 so there you go good performance really good performance and the crowd enjoyed it giving her a big ovation as she walks past them and she will face the winner of our second semi-final between Donjetta Sadaku of Kosovo and Rashid Ellis of the United States. Sadako of Kosovo, 22 years old, qualified for Tokyo at 60 kilos. Exited the tournament fairly swiftly, but still a major achievement to get that. European Youth Champion in 2016. And Rashida Ellis, the first fighter from the USA, USA that we've seen in the semi-final today. Finished second to Ferreira, who we've just seen in the American Championships in Ecuador a couple of months ago. And got to Tokyo as well, but lost to Caroline Dubois by split decision in the first round. Bronze medalist at the Pan Ams in 2019. And... Sadaku has won by unanimous decision all the way through so far. Rashid Ellis almost the same. A split decision 4 1 in the quarterfinals against Yasmin of India. Sadaku got past Shi Yi Wu of Chinese Taipei. The US team had a very successful men's. World Championships brought a young team, pretty inexperienced team, and they, they lit the place up, quite honestly. I had almost all of them in my ring pretty much all the way through, and they were terrific. Raheem Gonzalez with a gold, Jamal Harvey with a gold, Roscoe Hill, the Sean Lee, the Jamal Tully, Obed Bartiel. I'm missing fighters out. I'm missing fighters out. But they were great to watch. And they really kind of took to the stage. They really owned it, despite their lack of experience. Hasn't been quite the same for the women this time around. Rashida Ellis in the blue there of the USA. Sadaku of Kosovo in the red. Good right hand, nice long right hand there from Ellis. Brother Ronald was a pro fighter. People will recognise the name, some people I'm sure. Now coaches her. Trying to keep it on the outside here, Ellis has got a nice jab on her, really extends it. Down 
there it is. Catches Sadaku with it as she was looking to move in. Long right hand just pins her on the chest. And this is good stuff from Ellis because she's keeping this simple. She's not throwing bundles of punches, but she's throwing enough. And when she lands, it just offsets Sadaku, means that she has to stop and get her balance back, start again. Short with a one two there, Sadaku. Ellis taking the feet back. One two from Ellis. Did get there. There's that jab again. That's a good scoring punch. Easy to see for the judges. Sadaku trying to get onto the inside, but it was Ellis who landed the better punch there as well, that right hand. Headed towards the final minute of round one. Well, the referee hand called break there, so they're both perfectly within their rights just to get on with it. Good combination, but a left hand there off the back of it from Sadaku. She was setting her feet and getting to work a bit more there, Ellis, and she got caught, so that might be something to think about. around for the blue corner I would say a 10 8 there from Guatemala the others 10 9 so a good start from Rashida Ellis who box well as I say keeping it on the outside for the most part and she can win the fight doing that Sadaku's got to try and get inside that jab Move that head on the way in. And throw her out of that rhythm. So into the second. Dips in with the right to the body there, Rashida Ellis. And Sadaku, I think, is going to try and bring a bit more heat here. Ellis working with the jab. Throws that right hand and rolls out to her right. Sabaku looking for the jab. Left hand there of Ellis just touched her on the side of the head. Second round similar to the first so far. One, two, but I don't think it really got there from Sabaku. If it did, it hit gloves. Good upper body movement there from Ellis. Well, the referee's telling her to keep her head up, but she dipped to the knees there. There was nothing wrong with that. Right hand into the body there from Sadaku. Looks to try and get on the jab. Snatches at the right hand a little bit there when she was in a pretty good position. There's that jab again from Ellis. Into the final minute of round two. Alice taking that opening round, there's that jab again, just 
plants it up from the waist. As I say, really gets every millimetre out of it. And again, and the, the advantage of that is that it just stops your opponent in their tracks. You don't have to hit them absolutely full force, solid in the face. If you catch them on the neck, shoulder, anywhere with it, it just means that whatever they were planning to do, if they were moving forward, then it takes their balance away. They have to start thinking again. And it's not like Ellis is particularly tall either. It's just that's something she's drilled in the gym from uh, a very early age. And it's surprising how many fighters you see at this level who don't really throw a jab because the benefits of it are there for everybody to see when you, when you see someone who can do it. A good bit of work there from Ellis towards the end of the round as well. One, two came in from Sadaku, just pulled that weight back, made a miss and then fired the right hand back. And that will be another round for the blue corner. I'm confident of that. Ten nines. So she's making quite routine work of this so far, Rashida Ellis. Good discipline in her in her boxing. And there's that, that long right hand as well. As I say, she gets every millimetre out of it. She has got long arms, which is something that is always a bonus for a fighter. It's something that makes a person suitable to be a boxer if you've got long arms. Third and final round, Sadako of Kosovo with it all to do here in the red. Rashida Ellis of the USA in the blue. Just to Southpaw there briefly, Sadako. May as well try something to try and disrupt this nice flow that Ellis has been in pretty much from the start. Just reach for the one to a little bit there. Tiny mistake, but Sadako just pulled well out of range and wasn't able to to do anything about it. It wasn't like the balance completely went anyway. Stepping in there with a the 1-2 again, Ellis. Again, good head movement. The right hand came in, just pulled that chin back, pulled that head back. Nice combination again. And it's been very, very simple. The tools that she's used here, Rashida Ellis, jab, right hand. That's pretty much been it. She hasn't thrown much else apart from that. Nice combination there from Sadaku. Closing stages. So Ellis will go through to the final where she'll meet Beatrice Ferreira, who she lost to at the recent American Championships. And there we go, there goes the belt. Good display from the fighter in the blue corner. 
And there wasn't all that much that Donjetta Sadaku could do with her. Both Olympians. So that's the level that they're at. And it was a comfortable win for Rashida Ellis. Five nil, and she'll have won every round with all well, five of the judges there. I'm sure about that. Silver medal and fifty thousand US dollars. Guaranteed to her there. Billy Walsh, the coach, US coach behind her there. Such a successful coach for Ireland for a long time. Now transferring that success to the USA, who had a good Olympics. Slightly strange Olympics for them because Kishon Davis and Duke Reagan were, were part of the team and, and medalled, which they wouldn't have been expecting because Team USA don't entertain the idea of professionals staying in the fold and boxing as amateurs but because of covid although they'd both already turned pro and didn't have any intention of continuing as amateurs they found that their rankings were still good enough to qualify them for the olympic games because the american qualifier never happened because of because of the pandemic and of course you're going to take that opportunity if it comes So into the welterweights now. And we've got Canada up against Algeria here. We saw Iman Khalif win her semi-final for Algeria earlier on. But first up in the red corner, this is Charlie Kavanagh. A couple of split decisions and then a unanimous decision against Ivanusa Gomez Moreira of Cape Verde in the quarterfinals. And she got bronze in that American Championships, losing to Ferreira in the semis. To Beatriz Suarez. I beg your pardon. Also of Brazil. This is Itrak Chaib of Algeria. Got a stoppage in the first round, then a unanimous decision, then a split decision in the quarterfinals against Poland's Aneta Rigielska. Kavanagh, a former world youth champion as well in 2018. And Chaib boxed in Tokyo also. That was at 75 kilos. She's now boxing at 66, so that shows you the weight she must have been giving away, typically. And lost in the first preliminary round, but managed to qualify, which is always a major, major achievement. But when it comes to the next Olympics, 66 will be an Olympic weight. 51, 54, 57, 60, 66 and 75. So that would be music to the ears of died in the wall 66 kilo fighters. 21 years old, Chaib. Kavanagh, also 21. Pushing 22. She'll turn 22 in, in mid June.
So into the first, Kavanaugh, Canada in the red, Chive, Algeria in the blue. Lively start there, both of them just letting their hands go and having some success. Chai probably had the better of it in that red corner on the near side. Letting that right hand go, Chai in particular. Really looking to put some power on it. There it is, as Carter just opened up herself, she caught that right. Sure with the one-two there, Carter. Just a little bit out of range at times so far, moves in there, but Chibe was coming in the opposite direction at exactly the same time. A couple to the body from Carter, then a right hand from Chibe. A lot of artillery, heavy artillery has been thrown here and we're not even midway through the first round. I wonder if Chibe could keep this going. Carter just dips into the jab. She looks quite loose, Chibe though. Nice short left hand there. Carter with a good jab as well. A lot of what Chai has thrown has missed, and that can be that can be tiring. Any fighter will tell you that the missing is is energy sapping. Good jab there again from Chai. And again there. Just sneaks it straight through the guard. It's that right hand that she really looks to let go. And again, it's a good weapon that jab. A little left on the inside there from Kavanagh. It's a blue corner around this, I would say. A good right hand, stiff right hand, just to finish off the round there. Kavanagh had some success in that opening round as well, though she was on the front foot a lot of the time. And gets it, gets it with four out of the five judges. I'm with Cuba there, myself. But Kavanagh, 4-1. As I said, she did, have, she did have success in that opening round, no doubt about that. I just thought that Chibe, of the two of them, landed the more, the greater volume of, of clean shots, particularly with that jab. But the judges who were seated at ringside thought otherwise. So this one leaning in the favour of Charlie Kavanagh of Canada after that opening three minutes. As I said, though, Chive did miss with a lot of what she threw. So into the second. There's that right hand there that Chibe's looking for again. Didn't land clean though. Good left hand there from Kavanagh. Just working around Chibe, spins off, pivots around that left foot, that front foot. 
Both of them just exchanging jabs. Lead right hand there from Chive just rumpled the features of Kavanagh midway through round two. There's that jab again. It's a good jab. As I said, flicked up from the waist, as I described earlier on, just explodes into the eye line. Left hand from Chive there too. Kavanagh just setting her feet for the right. Lovely jab again there from Chive. When she's let go with that big wild kind of roundhouse right it's rarely landed a little shorter right hand over the top there did get through good right hand there from Carter Kavanagh rather Been a high tempo to this fight, a lot has been thrown. They've set a hot pace and they've managed to maintain it through these first six minutes, which is no mean feat, I can tell you, because there's been bundles and bundles of shots thrown there. They've barely stepped off each other once. And she needs it. She needs his second round jibe. I thought there wasn't much difference between that round and the first round. I would go with the blue corner just in that second round as, as well. That's no disrespect to Charlie Kavanagh. It's been close. It's been good. It's been really good to watch. And Chibe gets that one 3-2 across the board there. So two-point gap in favour of Chibe with one judge. That's a Cuban judge. And a two-point gap in favour of Kavanagh with two of the other judges. Zimbabwe and Indonesia. Turkey and Korea have got it 19 apiece. So this is really tight. And the situation is that Charlie Kavanagh needs to convert one of those two drawn cards into a win and she's through. Chai needs both of them. So into the third. Holds her feet nicely there, Kavanagh. Into the neutral corner on the right hand side of the ring as I look at it and through that one two a bit reckless there from Chai just threw that right hand from the waist from down by her knees almost and swung herself off balance It's been a good, good fight to watch this, and I think we're going to get some kind of a finish here with just over two minutes remaining. Lead left hand there from Kavanagh. Chibe, maybe she's feeling the pace a bit more of the two, actually, because some of these attacks now are looking quite ragged. Kavanagh's holding things together well. Again, just spins off around that front foot. She's got that slight advantage, remember. Those two drawn cards, they're the, they're the crucial ones. No one's winning this round 10-8. I'd be amazed if they did. So the ones that they've got advantages on, they're going to stay with them. That 20 to 18 that Chibe's got, that's going to be hers. The two 20 to 18s that Cavan has got, they're going to be hers. It's down to those two 19-19s. Good jab there from Kavanagh. Right hand misses there from Chibe. Her jab gets through there, though. Heading in towards the final minute. 
Long right hand there from Kavanagh. Fell in the behind him a bit, but got those hands back up. Nice jab as she moves to the left. Leaning her way in this final round. So far. Lovely right hand there from Kavanagh. Just dipped off to a left-hand side through the jab, but it wasn't really... She wasn't really looking to land it full force. She just threw it, dipped to a left-hand side, and then really harpooned that right hand through. A good combination again there from Kavanagh. Her conditioning is held together better. She's still nice and compact. Left hand lands there from Chai. He chases her. The Kavanagh moving off to her left, lands her left. Chaib has a little bit of success there. Closing seconds of what has been a very enjoyable fight. And the bell goes, and by my reckoning, Kavanagh has won that final round, which will see her go through. Overall, my card would be, by the barest of margins, 2-1 in favour of, of Idrak Chaib, but that's immaterial. There's five judges sat down there at ringside, and going into that final round, two of them had Kavanagh up, one had Chibe up, and it all comes down really to the two cards of 1919, the drawn cards going into the final round. Kavanagh needs one of them, Chibe needs both of them. I would be surprised if it's not Kavanagh who goes through here. So Kavanagh gets it, really good fight, thoroughly enjoyable fight. Be interested to see what scores we get in that in that final round, if I can work them out. Well, it's 3-2. So there would have been some split scoring in that final round. Kavanagh would have got that 1-19-19 that she needed. And the other one... Interestingly, he would have gone to Chibe there. So that was close. That was really close in that final round. Three judges, I think. Yes, three judges would have gone for Kavanagh there. Two would have gone for Chibe. Which gives us the 3-2 overall. So that really was close. I thought that was quite a clear round win for Kavanagh. But it was one of those fights. It was one of those fights. It was tight all the way through. Really enjoyed it. Charlie Kavanagh goes through to the final to box for gold. And potentially 100,000 US dollars. Well, another big home favourite coming up next. Busanaz Sumanelli, Olympic champion. She'll be in with Jan Jain Suwanafeng of Thailand. Sumanelli, a cracking fighter to watch. World Junior Champion, European Youth Champion a couple of times, European Under-22 Champion a couple of times, Women's World Champion last time out in 2019, and Olympic Champion, so there's really very, very little that she hasn't done. So here comes the aforementioned Busanaz Surmanelli, and she's been on fire in this competition, winning by stoppage in her first fight. The referee stopping that one. The opposition corner abandoning the fight, calling it a day. Seven seconds into round three in her second contest. And then winning by RSC in round three in the quarterfinals against Navbako Kamidova of Uzbekistan. So she has blazed a trail.
to the semi-finals. Jan Jaim Suwanapeng of Thailand has won every fight so far by unanimous decision. Three five nils, including one against Anna Lysenko of Ukraine in the quarterfinals. Lysenko, a, a good, good fighter. Suwanapeng with nothing like the same amount of experience as, as Sumanelli. She's two years younger. Gold medalist at the Asian Grand Slam in 2019. And the winner of this will meet Charlie Kavanagh, who we just saw go through, of course. Sumanelli from Bursa. Boxing out of the Trabs on Sport Club. So in the red here, Sumanelli of Turkey, Swanapeng, Thailand in the blue. And Swanapeng has come out quite aggressively here. She doesn't want to give any ground early on to Sumanelli. Good work to the body there from Simonelli. And then just span off around that lead foot, that left foot. Again, looking for the body with that kind of long right hand, dipping low at the waist there, Simonelli, as she gets towards the inside. That guard, pretty tight, smearing right hand, didn't miss Simonelli by much there, then rolls out to her left and throws a couple of left hooks, and Simonelli, it's just looking to, to stand her ground and have it with Sermonelli here. And I'm enjoying watching it. But I just wonder how wise it is. We'll see. Big lead left uppercut there from Sermonelli. Didn't miss by much. Made to miss with the right hand there, though. Good work that from Suana Peng. There's that lead left, though. A little bit longer this time. And landed. Final 30 seconds of this opening round. It's been a good round to watch. Suwana Peng, as I say, she's held her feet, held her ground. Left hands get through there, though, from Sumanelli. She decided she wants to fight fire with fire here. Good right hand there from Sumanelli. She took that well, Suwana Peng. Because that landed pretty much full force. Goes down to the body. Well, goes to the end of the first. And 
No, it's a good round to watch Simonelli have the better of it. But it wasn't like Suwanda Pen didn't have her moments. She was in there throwing for the duration of the three minutes. She made a lively start, but I thought it was pretty, pretty clear that the red corner overall was getting on top there, particularly towards the end. Split scoring, though. Split scoring. Three in favour of Simonelli, two in favour of Suwanda Peng. So... He's got a foothold in the fight here, Suwanda Peng. That's a good start for it. into the second round. Good left hand there from Simonelli. And there's a standing count. Simonelli just saluting the crowd on the far side, got through with a pretty heavy looking right hand. Swana Peng keen to indicate to the referee that she's absolutely fine and she took it well as she's taken everything so far. Then there's that right hand, Simonelli with that upper body movement as well. Just doesn't waste anything. She's on top of you all the time, just pressuring you with that front foot. Leads off with a, a straight left hand, really. It wasn't really a hook. And then just giving Suanna Payne the looks here. Clicking through the gears. Suanna Payne is, is hanging in there. But there'll be some 10 8s in this second round, I'd have thought. And again, Sumanelli just getting to Suwanda Peng there with that combination. And again third punch of it, that finishing left hand was the one that made cleanest contact. And that certainly was a clear round win for Sermonelli. One ten eight in there, one ten eight.
into the third round. Sumanelli with a with the advantage here. Clear water between her and Suana Peng with three of the judges. Suana Peng has played a big part in this fight and continues to do so here. Never taken a backward step. Has landed a good amount of leather on Sumanelli, but it's just that the Turkish fighter is has outweighed that with what she's managed to get through with. Particularly in that second round. And so Nelly just going after Suana Peng a bit here. Won that Olympic gold medal at 69 kilos, of course, and this welterweight division now down at 66. That is a big difference. That's nearly half a stone to put it in old imperial measurements. Three kilos, three might not sound like much, but it's a lot. but has been able to take that off comfortably. So 69 was obviously above where her real natural weight is, you would have to say. And it will be an Olympic weight in Paris, as I mentioned earlier on, those Olympic weights coming in line with Aiba weights, not in terms of the number of them, unfortunately, but in terms of what the actual classifications are. So welterweight was 69. It was changed to 66 at the end of last year. And for the Olympic qualification, it will be 66. It's total common sense that that would happen. But, but sometimes uh, in sport, common sense doesn't play quite as big a role as you might expect. So into the final few seconds here, Sumanelli just looking to try and finish with a flourish. So Anna Peng, I think, might have landed a right hand there as Sumanelli came forward. There's a little bit of a, a trip, a stumble maybe, and, and Sumanelli ended up on her back. And she's won this fight, but I tip my hat there to Jan Jaim Suana Peng because she set her stall out right from the very beginning. She made an aggressive start. She was always looking to take it to Sumanelli. There was just no point in her trying to do anything else. She's that kind of a fighter. She's a front foot, come forward fighter. There was no percentage in her all of a sudden deciding she was going to try and get up on her toes and keep it on the outside. She tried to fight fire with fire. It hasn't gone her way. But she's had a fantastic tournament anyway. At 21 years old. Having not mixed in this kind of company before. She can be very pleased with herself. But Sermonelli, who would have been a very hot favourite to make it to the final, has done exactly that. And through she goes by unanimous decision. And she's very much enjoyed that. And she'll have swept the, the board in that final round. That was another clear round for her. Maybe, maybe the odd 10-8 in there as well. Let's have a look. So 30 points to 25. A couple of 10-8s in there from Australia. 3-0 in rounds from Canada and the USA. The other two, two rounds to one. Split scoring in that first round gave Suana Peng two cards at the end of round one. And then Sermonelli just completely, completely took over.
friends and family in the crowd, I'm sure. Nothing quite like boxing at home, nothing quite like competing at home, whatever sport it is. And they've had a good evening session. Turkey, Chakiroglu winning her fight. Akbas winning hers. So Manelli has now won hers. They've got one more to go in the heavyweight division. Senna Demir. But first up, we have got the middleweights. So, Boxing for Canada here, Tamara Thibault. She'll be hoping to follow her teammate Charlie Kavanagh into a gold medal bout. Beat Caitlin Parker of Australia in the quarterfinals. Gold medalist at the American Championships in Ecuador. Beating Athena Bailon in the semi final, Bailon of Panama in the other semi final here. And she's won bronzes at the Pan Ams at the Commonwealth Games. And won that American Championships once before in 2017. So a lot of hardware in the trophy cabinet of Tamara Thibault. Not as much for Rudy Gramain of Mozambique. But she silvered at the All-Africa Games in 2019. First place in the African Zone 4 Women's Championships this year, earlier this year. Thibault got a bye and then has won by unanimous decision twice. Tremaine, unanimous decision and a couple of three twos. One in the quarterfinals against Carolina Makno of Ukraine. So into the first, Thibaut, long, lean kind of a fighter in that southpaw stance. Kramain of Mozambique, also southpaw. Looks to get up a little bit tighter. She'll need to get onto the inside. That's exactly what she's looking to do there. Really trying to put it on Thibaut early on. Make her attentions absolutely clear. Has Thibaut got that? Nice snappy jab that ideally you need to deal with someone like Romain. Throws that left hand and then moves straight onto the shoulder there, Romain. That's quite difficult to deal with, that kind of shot to nothing. And this is messy so far. It's difficult for Thibaut to get a real grip of this because Gremaine, a lot of the time, is throwing those singles and then moving straight onto the shoulder and wrapping her up. It makes it very, very difficult to counter. So you're looking for that single shot and then you come in behind it 
and your opponent doesn't really have room for an answer. So Thibaut just needs to back up a little bit, which he did there. And he does there again. Try and give herself a bit of space, a bit of room to work in as Gromain comes forward. When they're up close and personal like that, you would imagine that will favour the fighter in blue because her arms aren't as long, basically, and she's got the potential to, to get them free and, and use them to better effect than Thibaut anyway. Well, the referee's taking a point. And I think what he's indicating there is that Garain's not really listening when he's telling them to break or telling them certain things. So that's a major blow. And may well affect the way she goes about this. There's a lovely uppercut from, from Thibaut. That's exactly what I was talking about. As Gromain comes in, she just stepped back slightly across with that left foot and timed her with the uppercut. And she was on her way forward. Bell goes to the end of the first round. Point deduction there for Gromain, and if the cards have gone against her as well, which I suspect they might, then, then that's a huge first round for Thibaut, who towards the end there just started to really figure it out, figure out that style. That's what international amateur boxing's about in, in so many ways, and she's got it with four round other five judges there. Lots of fights you'll have seen before, some you won't, some you'll have seen a bit, some you might have sparred, but basically you have to work it out on the job. And if you've not been in with somebody before and if they've got that kind of ball-like uh, approach that Gromain has got, it's hard to deal with because she's muscular, she's strong. She throws those punches, dips her head and travels in towards you at pace. You've got to have the confidence to just step off and give yourself a bit of room. Try and meet her on the way in. And Thibaut did that well, so... On those four cards that she's won, they are 10-8 advantages because of the point deduction. So it's a great start for her, really. Gromain will do more of the same in the second round. It's, it's the way she knows. And another point, another point. And it's for bringing the head in low. He made the same gesture in the, in the first round and I thought it might have been... He seemed to be tapping his ears. I thought it might have been because... The fighter wasn't really listening, but given what just happened there, it has to be because she's dipping quite low at the waist, just bringing that head in low and, and keeping it there. There's no real danger of a head clash with it because she's shorter anyway. And then when she dips as low as that, it just ends up just in the chest of Thibaut, who's cruising now because she already had that two-point gap and there's been another point deduction. Nice right hand there from Thibaut, just threw it and moved off to her right. And the bronze medal that Gromain has won here is Mozambique's first ever medal in the Women's World Championship. So she's had a, a tremendous, tremendous run to get this far. Still working away, coming forward. Nothing wrong with that. Kept the head up that time. Through the hands. Last nice combination there from Thibaut. Long and loose, finished with the right hand. This is another round for the red corner. The energy 
the desire is still there from Grumain. And this approach has got her all the way to the semi-final, so you can't say that it hasn't been successful because it absolutely has. But maybe when you get up to this kind of rarefied air, it's going to need a bit of refining. Both of these boxes of the Commonwealth Games, the 2018 Tebow getting to the semi-finals, Grumain to the quarter-finals. Both got beaten by Lauren Price, who has turned professional now. Well, GB Boxing made an interesting announcement recently that Price and Karis Artingstall, who got a bronze at the Olympics, Price got gold, of course, they're going to continue to train with the GB setup in, in Sheffield, the elite amateur setup in Great Britain. They will take care of her as a professional. They will have the, the opportunity, we understand, to box in Paris to make themselves available to take part in that next Olympic Games, which, of course, is only two years away now or two and a bit. So that was an interesting, quite radical departure there, actually, for the, the amateur setup of of one of the sport's leading nations in, in recent times. Had a great Olympics, GB, six medals overall. It wasn't something that they'd previously been willing to entertain at all, the idea of professional fighters still representing Great Britain in either boxing and the Olympics. So into the final round, and she did sweep that. Previous round, 10-9. So, a big, big advantage heading into round three. Really, if you're Tebow in this situation, what you want to try and make sure in this final round is you just don't pick up any kind of silly injury, some kind of head clash. That is a possibility against Cremay. Nice uppercut there from Tebow. Timed her on the way in again and again with the left. With head guards, of course, head clashes become less likely, but they do still happen. They can still happen. There's that left hand again, just backing up, just giving herself a little bit of room and pinging it straight down the middle. Heading into the final minute. Three more fights to go tonight after this. One more at middleweight, of course. And then two at heavyweight, 81 kilos plus. Closing stages. Tamara Tebow of Canada is going to go through to the final where she will face the winner of Davina Michelle and Athena Byler. Great left uppercut there about 20 seconds ago from Tebow, who showed us some, some very good all round technical skills there. You can see exactly how she won that American Championships a few months ago and how she won it back in 2017. Just had a little look at Grumain in the first half of the first round and then just started to adjust those feet, catch her on the way in, avoid those marauding attacks. And she made quite easy work there actually of a very awkward opponent.
So Thibaut goes through. There's that left uppercut that she used to good effect as the fight went on. You just see her take those feet back and there's that left straight down the middle as well. That's from the final round. A high quality bit of work. Sees her opponent just coming towards her. How's the composure? Just to slide back and then throw that left hand. Our second women's middleweight semi-final now between Athena Bailon who lost to Tebow in that American Championships final in Guayaquil, Ecuador, earlier this year. And we saw Bailon at the Olympics last year in Tokyo, where she got to the quarterfinals. Won the American Championships herself in Vargas, Venezuela in 20. 18. She's won the South American Games as well and the World Championships way back in 2014. She hasn't had any success in this competition since then, so it's been a long time coming. And she did also box in Rio, so she is extremely experienced. The Rio Olympic Games I refer to there, of course. Davina Michelle of France. 24 years old, as opposed to Bylon's 32. Boxed at the World Championships in 2019. Got a silver at the World Juniors. Losing to Simonelli, actually, way back in 2013. So a big gap between these two in terms of experience. Bailon beat Turkey's Bruzera Isilda in the quarterfinals. 4-1 split decision. Good fighter, Isilda. Saw her last year quite a bit. And not surprised that she made it all the way to the quarterfinals. Michelle of France beat Kerry Davis of England in her quarterfinal. Scored a stoppage earlier in the competition. So Bailon in the red. Michelle in the blue. Physically, they're pretty similar. Michelle, a little bit thicker set when you look at her there, across the shoulders, across the biceps. Similar kinds of heights. Both looking to try and establish the jab early on. Good left hand there from Bailon. Got through as these two are just revolving around each other in the middle of the ring. Just getting up on their toes a little bit there, Bailon, shaking out those gloves as well. Long left hand blocked. 
by Michelle. Jab to the body there from Bailon. Gets through with that lead right hand as well. She's just having slightly the better of this. Picking her punches slightly better. Just short with a the jab there, Michelle. It's a jab there from Michelle, that just managed to find its way to the target. Closing stages of round one. Been an interesting fight to watch this, been a kind of technical battle between these two. I said right at the start that physically they're quite similar. Set up in opposite stances, one right-handed, one left-handed. Both looking to try and establish that jab. And for me, Bailon has just picked her punches a bit better in that opening round. And that's the difference between them. Clear enough from, from what I saw. Not a huge gap. She's a policewoman, Athena Bylon. Ten lines across the board there for her. Get quite a lot of police officers. In elite Iber boxing. So into the second. Bylon with that first round in the bag. Michelle needs this second round now. So she might have to be a little bit more expansive, which could play into Bylon's hands. In these three round fights, the first round is, is so important. Pecking with the jab a little bit there, Michelle. I don't think she wants to go too gung-ho. She's trying to still trust in her method here. I think that's the right thing to do. If she opened up too much, I do think that Bailon would pick her off, but she's got to push it a little bit more than she is at the moment. Just waiting a little bit too long on the outside there, and eventually it's Bailon who lets her hands go. Left hand into the body there from Bailon. She's just got a bit more variety and a slight sign of frustration there from Michelle as she got pushed into the corner post. She's held onto it for a second and it was a kind of gesture that suggested a slight rolling of the eyes. She's not really able to get a hold of Athena Bailon. I think it's it is proving a bit frustrating. She inched in with her front foot there, then let that right go.
enormously experienced Bailon. As I say, won that gold medal in the Women's World Championships. Jeju back in 2014, boxed in Rio in the Olympics, won the South American Games in 2018, the American Championships in Venezuela that same year. Boxed in Tokyo in the Olympics, got to the quarterfinals last year, and then silver for the American Championships earlier this year. So she's been consistent. And again, I thought that was, well, it was another clear round for Athena Bylon. Michelle's trying what she can here, but Bylon's just the better fighter of the two. It's as simple as that. Ten nines. So 20 points to 18 on all five cards there for Bylon going into this third and final round. And she will go through. to face Tamara Tebow in a rematch of their final in Ecuador. Which only happened a short time ago. That would have been back at the end of April, I think, the American Championships, maybe back at the end of March. Carries those hands low. Nice left hand there from Bylon. And that's that great bit of variety that she's got, just spinning around that front foot, keeping Michelle turning. It doesn't quite have that fluidity that Bylon's got. Nice combination with the left to the body there from Bylon. It's been a good performance. But this is a great step up for Michelle. She boxed in Ulan Ude in Russia in 2019. Went out fairly swiftly though. So this is a massive stride forward to go from that to reaching the semi-finals, taking a bronze medal and 25,000 US dollars. Good right hand there from Michelle that got through, found the target. Closing stages here. Nice double jab from the French woman as well. So Athena Bailon is going to go through to the final at 75 kilos with what you would probably describe as the minimum of fuss there, really. 
against Davina Michelle. The French fighter, as I say, made a huge step forward making it to the semi-finals here. Kept her boxing together, persevered. Did land some decent shots at times, but in Bailon, just, just up against somebody who knew too much for her, basically. At eight years older and much, much more experienced. She just had a superior skill set and was able to, to bring that to bear. And so after this, we'll go through to the heavyweight division. That's our final division on this semi-final day. Our final two fights. Senna Demir of Turkey will be hoping to make it five winning semi-finalists for the home nation. Up against Lydia Fedora of Poland. Two very experienced fighters there. Then we'll have Kai Jamadi of Morocco and Mokira Abdullaeva of Uzbekistan. So this will be Demir against Fedora. Two experienced campaigners we've got here. Senor Demir is 39 years old, up against a mere 32-year-old in Lydia Fedora. Demir boxed at the World Championships in 2012 and in 2019. Getting to the quarterfinals both times, but her best finish was a silver medal in New Delhi at the Worlds in 2018. A bronze the same year at the European Championships, so that was her standout year. But she won the botch guy earlier this year, so she's got some form. Fedora. Well, she's been around even longer. Boxing at World Championships in... 2010, 2012, 2014, 2016. Consistently getting to the last 16 on one occasion to the quarterfinals. Bronze medal at the European Championships in 2018 and still Polish women's national champion. So these two definitely, definitely feel that they could get something done here. Fedora beating Maria Lovczynska of Ukraine in her quarterfinal. Demir getting a, a stoppage, an RSC in round three against Diana Romero of Colombia. They've had a good day, the Turkish fans. Not such a great afternoon. One fighter out of three getting through. But it's been three out of three in the evening session. And they will be hoping that Demir can make it four.
Final instructions from the referee. You can see the height difference there in favour of Demir. So Demir is southpaw, boxing in the red, representing Turkey. Fedora, Poland in the blue. It's the heavyweight division, so over 81 kilos. Right hand on the inside there, landed for Fedora. And these two just going at it from the start here, setting their feet and letting their hands go. No feeling out process here whatsoever. They're both in pretty good shape, I've got to say. In the top division, men's and women's. You don't have to make a weight, of course, so sometimes you see fighters carrying a bit of spare. That's not really the case here. Trying to move that head on the way in there, Fedora. Just trying to maul Demir, trying to get onto the inside and crawl all over it. Demir's not allowing that to happen. Trying to use that southpaw one-two and just catches Fedora as she rolled up there. She was moving the head on the way in as she has to. We're not even halfway through the round and there have been so many punches thrown. Good combination there, nice one-two from Demir. They cannot possibly keep this up, you wouldn't imagine. In these top divisions, to see a pace like this is, is unusual. And again, both just setting their feet and leaning in there. Demi just cracking into one, two. Nice lead, left hand catches. Fedora again there, but Fedora just shrugs her off and looks to come forward into the final minute of this first round. Again, she's digging her toes in and banging in that one too there, Demir, and does it again and then just steps off to the left. That step to the left afterwards is absolutely crucial. She can't just stand there and admire her work because Fedora will just keep coming on to her all through the fight, you would imagine. If those feet slow down at any point, then... And that's when Fedora really looked to come into things. Right to the body there from the Polish fighter. This is a very, very entertaining opening round. I have to say, there's that crunching one-two again from Demir. It doesn't seem to be deterring Fedora in any way. And the crowd absolutely loving that at the end of round one, and I'm not surprised. I'd say that was a demi round myself, but I think it would have taken plenty out of it. Fedora made her work ferociously hard, so four out of five judges go her way. It was pretty clear, I thought, particularly the one-twos that she was cracking in, just backing up a little bit, letting those hands go, but there was a hell of a lot of pressure there from Fedora. And she'll need to bring that in rounds two and three. Forward she comes immediately there, Fedora, head dipped, walking in. And Demir again has got to plant those feet, work those hands. And then once she lets them go, she's got to move off.
And this really is just a, a test of, of Demir's stamina more than, than anything else. Fedora's as well, but Fedora is obviously very confident that she can keep this kind of pace going. And the questions he's asking of Demir is, can you? Can you keep moving those hands, keep working those hands, keep hitting me hard enough to knock me off balance and, and prevent me getting my work done? Because she's not really stopping her in her tracks with the one-two here, Demi, but she's hitting her hard enough that it's making it difficult for Vidura to get herself set and land cleanly and often. And it's at around this point now that Fedora needs things to start turning because she's lost that first round with four out of five judges. The second round has been pretty similar. She's got to start to get to Demir in the second half of this round now. This is where it has to start happening. Good combination there from Demir again, though. She's trying to trap her in the corner there, Fedora. Demir wasn't having any of it. She's backed her up into the neutral corner here, though. Maybe just waited a little bit too long there, Fedora. Demir went there voluntarily. Maybe felt that she was being tempted in there. Fedora lured in. Good left hand there from Demir. And another left. And if anything, it's maybe Fedora who might be feeling the pace a bit here. Just been caught comfortably, easily by Demir as she comes in. The head has stopped moving as much. And I think it's, if anything, it's turned the other way here. Demir is just hitting Fedora at will almost as she walks forward. But she continues to do that left into the body. It was a good shot there from Demir. There goes the bell, and that's another good round for the red corner. And she doesn't look to be blowing too hard there at all, and when you consider that she is at the veteran stage, really. That is impressive. Ten lines across the board. Four scores of 20 points to 18, one 19, 19, so... Big lead there for, for Demir. And as I said, in the second half of that second round, that was where it needed to start happening for Fedora. That was where she needed to start to see Demir wilt. But it was the other way around. It was the other way around. So third and final round on those Turkish fans in fine voice. It looks very much like four of their semi-finalists in this evening session are going to go through, which will make it five out of seven in total. So they'll have two bronzes and they'll be guaranteed at least five silvers, but they'll be looking to convert plenty of those five into gold. That will be the idea when we hit the finals tomorrow and Friday. Still she comes, Fedora. Hasn't lost hope yet. But Demir has been comfortable. She's never really looked like fading. She hasn't taken that much. She's covered up effectively. And there's been enough snap on these punches to keep Fedora off her. Taking a little bit of a backward step there, Demir. Heaving in a couple of breaths. Midway through round three. But she's retreated to corners to the ropes voluntarily. She's been happy to give that ground. And just let Fedora come onto her. Bangs her to the body there. Then goes up top with a, a left to the head. 
She's got a nice loose style about her, Demi. She doesn't load up on anything. Which is what really allows her to, to keep up this kind of punch output. Nice left cross, right hand as well. Terrific pace to this, as I said before, for a heavyweight fight. And Fedora, you've got to give her a lot of credit as well. She's really digging in in this third and final round. I thought she was feeling it at the end of the second, but she just kept coming forward. She is trying to move that head. She's taken a hell of a lot of punches. None of them have been absolutely massive, but they've been hard enough. And she's not blinked. And again, just setting those feet, keeping those hands on the move. And every time she's hit Fedora, the effect it's had is it's meant that she hasn't been able to do what she wants to do. She's never looked hurt, but it's just taken her balance away, robbed her of the purchase on her punches. Bell goes at the end, and they know that they've got another fighter through to a final. And that was a very enjoyable fight to watch, really was. And that's a very good performance from Senir Demi, I have to say. And Fedora gave it absolutely everything, absolutely every ounce she had, but Demi has done the business there. And what's most impressive about it in many ways is the fact that, as I said earlier on, she's 39 years old, Senator Demi. She doesn't look it, I have to say. I'm not doubting the... Uh, the veracity of the of the stat, <laughs> but um, very impressive work rate, very impressive indeed. So through she goes to the final, and that completes a very successful evening session for the Turkish team. Some split scoring in that final round. I think, someone just saying to me, which I find surprising because I thought Demir won that third and final round. Fedora though, put in an unbelievable shift all the way through that fight. But she came off distinctly second best there. And you see the smile on her face there and she probably never thought this would happen because when you get towards the end of an elite career and she's almost too old to be boxing in, in elite Iber boxing, for this opportunity to come up and it's at home, it's in your home country, it's amazing the way things work out sometimes and then up you turn, you put in the performances and before you know it you're boxing for a gold medal in front of, in front of your own supporters and you can see you can see without knowing what they're saying to each other in there you can see that this is a fairy tale for her you really can and for everybody involved with her she just punched constantly and accurately against an opponent who just rolled forward towards it like a heavy goods vehicle all fight long all nine minutes of it and she will fight the winner of this fight which is Morocco's Kai Jamadi and Uzbekistan's Mokira Abdelaeva Kai Jamadi lives in Casablanca. 
Boxed to the World Championships a number of times. The 75 kilos, boxed to the Rio Olympics at 75 kilos, reaching the quarterfinals. And it was at that weight, all the way through to the 2020 African Olympic qualifier, which she won. She's now up at 81 plus. She didn't end up going to Tokyo, so maybe the weight in the end was just too much. It just wasn't doable anymore. 31 years old now. And this is Mokira Abdeleva of Uzbekistan. Bronze at the Asian Championships last year. National champion. It's our final fight of the evening session, final fight of the semi-finals. After this, our lineup will be complete. Our referee from the Netherlands. Taking a bit of time to sort that head guard out. So Mardi Morocco in the red, Abdelaver is Bekistan in the blue. Here we go, final fight of our semi-finals. Two orthodox fighters, Mardi with the edge in size here. More than an edge, she looks significantly bigger. Turning southpaw there, Abdelaver. Left hand just catches. Abdelaver, she was back pedalling, no knockdown signal the referee. I think that probably was a knockdown actually because it caught her as she was on the move backwards and it was the punch that then caused her to lose her feet and go down. There was nothing damaging about it, so it wouldn't have mattered if he called a standing count anyway because the way Aiba boxing is, is scored, a knockdown, as we know, doesn't translate into a 10-8 round or even a 10-9 round in favour of the fighter who scored it. Right hand lead there from Mardi. Just holding that lead glove high, Abdeleva. Mardi again just whips in that long right. She's struggling to deal with the greater size of her opponent here, Abdeleva, although she lands a couple of decent shots there as Mardi just walks in quite tall. Abdelaver doing a good job of staying out of the way there. Just beginning to, to settle here. A minute remaining in round one. Not all that much clean's been landed in this round, actually. Mardi's looked like the boss because she's been on the front foot more. Looking to let those hands go, but a lot of it's missed. And just walks in with the hands following the feet a bit there, and she's caught Abdelaver who just lifts into the ropes. I'm not sure what's happened there because she's got her, her left glove on her right knee. And she was a little bit of an open target there for a second. The referee has counted, but that knee looks bad. That knee looks bad. And I'm not sure she's going to be able to continue here, to be honest. And essentially, she will end up retiring through injury because I don't see any way that she can keep boxing with the knee in that state. She can barely put any weight on it. 
I've no idea what happened. It was just off to my left-hand side. The corner post was kind of in my way a bit. And she just seemed to be listening into the ropes. And my first thought was that she'd been caught and, and scrambled and hit hard because she was just leaning into those ropes. But it's the knee that's the problem. We don't see low leg injuries in boxing all that much. I remember being ringside when David Hay and Tony Bellew boxed for the, for the first time and Hay ruptured his Achilles tendon after about five or six rounds, I think it was, and somehow managed to continue all the way into the 11th before his trainer Shane McGuigan decided that it was all a bit hopeless and, and threw the towel in. Well, she's just trying to loosen that knee up a bit. And they're going to allow her to continue. So back on goes the head guard. Remember Orlania Solis twisting his ankle against Klitschko. Well, they're celebrating in the red corner. Has the referee called this one off or not? And the fighter has been retired, so either the referees stop the contest here. It'll be RSCI injury, you would imagine. Referee stops contest due to an injury on the advice of the ringside doctor. But with the head guard going back on, I did think that they were going to be able to continue. But it's going to be a win for Mardi because that injury was sustained not as a result of anything that she did. It was just pure bad luck for Abdeleva. So Kai Giamardi goes through and she will face Senor Demir of Turkey in the heavyweight final. So Turkey up against Morocco in the final and that brings to a close our semi-finals. It's been a very, very enjoyable afternoon and evening session. Good day for Turkey. They've got five of their seven semi-finalists through. Ireland have got a couple through. Canada with, with two as well, so... Things being spread around nicely. And the finals will take place tomorrow and Friday, both times starting at six o'clock local time. Let's just have a look there. She takes a stagger backwards. And that's, well, no, that was the, the knockdown that I thought may well have been given earlier in, the, earlier in the round. But the end came with the injury to the right knee. So she's just being pushed back there. The referee separating the two of them. A long right hand there from Mardi. And this could be it here. Getting pushed back towards the ropes. Not in any great trouble there, but just there. It just something went there, didn't it? Because she's just listing into the ropes. The referee was. A bit slow, to be honest, getting in between them there, I thought. But nothing significant landed. And unfortunately, she wasn't able to continue. And that was our final action. And I'll just leave you with the results from this evening session. But as I say, please do join us Thursday and Friday, 6 o'clock local time. Whatever time that may be, wherever you are. We've got 12 great finals for you. Until then, take care.